Here is the recap of the first season of Invasion. The series has several storylines running in parallel. They do not overlap with each other, so I will tell about them separately. In a small American town, Sheriff Bell has his last day before retirement. He gets a report of a stolen car, and the old man rides out to the scene of the crime. In the middle of a field, Bell and his partner find a pickup truck and a strange hole, which could not just appear here, and a moment later a cloud of locusts passes by them. At night, the sheriff returns to the field and sees something moving under the ground. Suddenly a black tentacle stabs him in the back of the head and the man falls dead. At the same time, a translucent flying object flies over the field. In New York, Anisha receives a call from the school where her children Luke and Sarah attend. It turns out that for some unknown reason, all the students have nosebleeds, except her son Luke. The hospital finds no illnesses and Anisha goes home with her children to her husband Ahmed. Soon there is an explosion and a strange electromagnetic pulse. Luke begins to experience a turbo headache and informs his mother that some voice is repeating the word Wajo nonstop. After the second explosion, communication and electricity disappear, so the heroes decide to leave the destroyed house and find shelter. Checking into a motel, Luke shows Sarah an unusual object he found earlier. The next day, Anisha and Ahmed quarrel and stop the car. Suddenly, they discover that their son has disappeared somewhere and go in search of him. They reach a cabin in the woods where an elderly couple lives, where they find Luke. The old people allow them to stay with them. But after a few days, the heroes start running out of food, and Anisha goes to get supplies. She runs into the military and tells them that she has a medical degree, after which the soldiers take her with them to the medical center. There, she discovers a strange black material in people's wounds that reacts to touch. A short time later, the president of the USA makes a statement. She reports that the cause of the destruction around the world was an alien invasion. However, it is not clear what they want and how to contact them. Anish escapes and returns home, but soon they are attacked by an alien. The bullets don't hurt it, and the woman randomly grabs her sin's black shard from his bag. After that, she kills the creature with it, and the old people in all this mess die. The next day, they make it to the shelter. Luke, along with his sister, sneaks into a morgue where the military is holding dead people infected by aliens. His mother finds him the moment the boy touches the corpse with a black shard, causing the infestation to begin to recede. The military finds out about it and takes the hero's family to their base along with the shard. On the way, they are attacked by some crazy people who want to take away the only weapon against the aliens. The heroes have to hide in the forest and in the gunfight, Amit is killed. However, Anisha and her children manage to escape. In Tokyo, Hanada has been chosen as one of those who are to fly into space for scientific research. Her girlfriend Mitsuki is upset by this news as she will be leaving for a whole year, and the mission is quite dangerous. Mitsuki works in the Japanese division of NASA and is a very gifted girl. Soon on the orbital station, for some unknown reason the wall explodes and all the astronauts are thrown into open space. When Earth learns of the accident, they try to figure out what happened and involve a special organization, but Mitsuki is suspended because they found out about her closeness with Hanada. Mitsuki thinks they can't figure it all out and steals a pause from her colleague. She decodes the data and learns two notable details. First, something big crashed into the space station. Second, when she clears the audio, she hears the word Wajo spoken by Hanada at the time of the crash. The superiors reprimand Mitsuki for disobedience and kick her out of the building. She is convinced that Hanada is still alive, even though it doesn't make sense, after which she goes to Hanada's father named Mariah. The man is also a radio engineer, and together with the heroine try to make out what kind of audio message was received during the accident. The old man turns up the volume of the background noise, and suddenly the sand in his pot forms some kind of pattern. Mitsuki goes back to his boss and tells him of her speculation. The man informs her in confidence that it is aliens and that she is not the only one who heard the signal. After that, he gives her the equipment to conduct her own independent investigation. The heroes infiltrate the satellite station and try to find that signal in order to establish a connection with the aliens. They find it, but Mitsuki realizes that this signal is actually a network of some kind of shared alien mind and this is how they pass information to each other. At that moment, the military arrives. 
Mitsuki convinces them that she should be the one to lead the investigation. The heroes, led by the military, keep trying to contact the aliens, but all to no avail. Mitsuki decides to send an image and video of Hanada without permission and for some reason gets a response, the repeated word Wajo. She soon begins to communicate with Hanada, but the military confirms that the voice is synthesized and not real. The superiors think it's aliens, but Mitsuki is sure it's her girlfriend and she even manages to confirm it by talking to her. However, the military still intends to launch a missile attack on the place where the signal came from. In London, a class of school children goes on a field trip. Local bully Monty bullies a boy named Casper for having a mentally unhealthy mother and for having epileptic seizures. Suddenly, Casper has another seizure and at that moment some objects start falling from the sky. The driver fails to control and their bus falls into a canyon. All the children are unharmed, but the driver is seriously injured and soon dies. The bully Monty thinks that Caspar is to blame for the accident and encourages the others against him in every possible way. However, a girl named Jamila stands up for him. The next day, Casper decides to climb to the top and the children follow his example. When they get out, they find the wreckage of a Russian satellite as well as a strange black material. Casper discovers that he has drawn something like this in his journal before. The children go to London and on the way they find a truck with sweets. Kaspar and Jamila open the driver's door and discover a strange substance that reacts to humans. The kids turn on the radio and realize that there has been some kind of disaster in the world. Soon the teens are separated. Some of the children continue on their way home, while the rest stay here waiting for help. After a while, the heroes meet a woman in a car and she gives them a ride to London, along the way telling them about the alien invasion. Before the teenagers are separated, the bully Monty apologizes to Kaspar for his behavior. The hero, along with Jamila, reaches home and discovers that his mother has died at the hands of an alien. The hero tells his friend about his visions and voices in his head, as well as that he feels with his whole body the presence of aliens. After that, he decides to stop taking pills, which all this time dulled his senses. In Afghanistan, Marine Cole and his men go in search of a missing squad. In a town, they come across a school with a blown up wall and children who point out an unusual pillar of sand in the desert. The military gets there and discovers an alien object. They open fire on it, but it releases a pulse and all the soldiers except Cole are killed. A man regains consciousness. He is wounded and has no connection with the base. Soon the hero loses consciousness and almost dies but he is saved by a local resident. Together they go to the nearest town, and Cole receives a signal from his teammate. The hero gets to the local hospital where he finds him, but the man is badly wounded and cannot walk. It's when the building is attacked, but it's not just humans, it's also aliens. In this chaos, Cole takes his fellow soldier and takes him out of the building, but he still dies. After that, the hero gets in the car and returns to the base. However, it turns out that everyone evacuated since they were attacked by an unknown enemy. The man calls his wife by satellite phone and informs her that he will soon return home. On the way, he meets a local family, and from them he learns of an airplane heading west. Together they get to it, and Cole gives up his rifle to get on board with his new friends. However, he only makes it as far as London. Soon he meets Caspar and Jamila. The boy tells him that he has the knowledge to stop the aliens and proves it with drawings that he drew long before the aliens appeared. They make it to the hospital where the doctor causes the boy to have an epileptic seizure. What's amazing is that the doctor has never seen anything like this before, as it's as if his brain has synchronized with something. At this point, the building is attacked by aliens and they start looking for Caspar. Eventually, the boy manages to connect to them and stop the attacking monsters. Just then, the military launches a nuclear strike on the alien spaceship and it crashes to the ground. The aliens on the surface come to a complete stop. The boy loses consciousness and does not regain his senses, and doctors discover that he has no brain activity. The humans on the planet celebrate their victory over the aliens. Soon, scientists infiltrate the crashed ship and see some living organisms. Cole returns to America, and he is told that the aliens tried to terraform the Earth, and all the creatures that attacked people were artificial, in other words, machines. 
After that, the man goes home to his wife. Anisha and her children see the news, but decide not to hurry and stay in the abandoned hut, where Luke discovers that the shard is active again. Mitsuki once again tries to contact Hanati and suddenly gets a response. Kaspar lies dead in the morgue, but wakes up in his bed and realizes that his consciousness is connected to the alien's shared mind. Meanwhile, people see an alien ship hovering over the Earth, many times larger than the previous one. This is the end of the first season. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the like button. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.